Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. I want to first start off by thanking our Wellness Wednesday sponsors. Epigenomics, Genentech, Merck, No Shave November, Taiho Oncology, Turtle Beach, and Quicken Loans. Today we welcome Dr. Amy Gallagher. She will be talking about the seven C's of resiliency. Take it away, Amy. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Gallagher, licensed psychologist and vice president of Whole Health LLC, subsidiary of Mind Springs Health. It's my pleasure to be with you today for this session of Wednesday Wellness. I would like to introduce you today to resiliency and how we can build up our resiliency levels using the seven C's, letter C, not the body of water C, of resiliency. So first, let's define it. Resiliency is the ability to be able to bounce back and recover from challenging or negative situations. We can even conceive of resiliency as a muscle. It can be strengthened and it can be improved with practice and with using it. So similarly to how you might lift weights in a gym to build up your biceps, by using some skills focused on building up resiliency, you can uh, strengthen that resiliency muscle personally. All right, so let's get to the seven C's of resiliency. This concept came out of the positive youth development movement. However, it's very relevant today, especially for adults. Researcher Rick Little and others focus on the following seven C's. Control, coping, competence, confidence, connection, contribution, and character. I'm gonna say them again. Control, coping, competence, confidence, contribution, connection, and character. All right, so let's dive into them one at a time. First off, we have control. Figure out what you have control over and focus on doing those things. So much is out of our control these days. That's part of living with uncertainty, uh, which is of course part of living with the pandemic. These may include the stay at home orders, schools being closed, working from home, the, pandem the pandemic's trajectory, all of those things may be outside of our control. However, there are many things in our lives that we do have control over, so it's important to pay attention to those things and really focus on those. So first off, we have lots of control over our routines. Please stick to your routines. This includes going to bed at the time that you typically would, it includes waking up at the time that you normally would, eating at, the, at the, your um, scheduled um, eating times, as well as doing some exercise if that's part of your routine as well. Really be mindful of moderation. We don't want to develop a bad case of the overs during this time. And when I say a bad case of the overs, I'm talking about overeating, over drinking, over caffeining, maybe overspending on the internet, those types of things. When we really pay attention to the aspects of our life that we do have control over in moderation, we're able to create opportunities that will allow us to decrease stress and worry and that feeling of overwhelm. We also have a lot of control over the immediate, the amount of media that we're ingesting these days. While it's of course important to stay informed, think about limiting your media consumption and considering not listening to or reading the news after a certain time of the day, maybe after five o'clock or after six o'clock. Perhaps this might even increase your ability to sleep um, if sleep is something that is eluding you these days. I, I do wanna reiterate the importance of sleep hygiene, which is another thing that we do have control over as well. Go to bed at the same time, limit your electronics in the bedroom, sleep in a cool room, in a dark room, and do any of those rituals before bed that you typically would, like taking a bath or reading a book, those types of things. Even while physical distancing, there may still be the opportunity to spend some time in the outdoors and getting some good doses of fresh air. So take some deep breaths outside, feel the grass, smell the flowers, all of those things are certainly within our control. The good news is, is that the outdoors isn't canceled these days and spending some time outdoors can just have a wonderful effect on our mental well-being. I also want to say that routine, media limits, fresh air, and sleep hygiene may also be good strategies for those living with others in the house, whether it's partners, children, roommates. So help um, those in your house get on an appropriate sleep-wake cycle 
practice good sleep hygiene together and schedule some time during the day for all of those things that we need to get done. Maybe it's um, work from home type activities, maybe it's some schoolwork. Think about adding in some times for play, times to connect with friends virtually or loved ones virtually, and then some family time together as well. Our next C is coping. I do want to caution you, what we do for coping can either be described as positive or negative. As I mentioned earlier, a bad case of the, the overs could result from negative coping behaviors. So let's focus on ways in which we can cope with our thoughts and emotions through positive behaviors and actions. So first, one of the ways that we can do some really good coping is to take some time to do some deep breaths. Breathing deeply can be so beneficial. It can allow our bodies to relax and re-regulate a little bit and allows us to kind of ground ourselves in the present versus focusing on the future or on the past. So one way that you can do some deep breaths is something that's known as box breathing. So I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you as well. So what you're going to do is draw a box while you're breathing. Now you can do this in your head or you can do this with your finger as well. So think about taking a deep breath in as you're drawing up one side of the box. And then go across the top of the box while you're exhaling. Breathe in to go down and draw the downside of the box. And then exhale across the bottom. By using the visualization of a box, we're able to really focus on our breathing and do some really great inhales up great exhales across, inhales down, and exhales across as well. So it really allows us to focus on our breathing and get to a place of more calm. Another way in which we can do some really great coping is practicing some gratitude skills. Gratitude is really a game changer, um, the, as what the research suggests. Um, when we're practicing gratitude, we also cannot be entitled. So um, practicing gratitude is a good way to feel grateful for what we do have and keep our focus on what is going on currently in the present. So some ways in which you can practice gratitude might be to write down three things you're grateful for during the day, share um, a gratitude, um, something you're grateful for at dinner with those whom you're eating with, or start a Zoom meeting with a gratitude, everyone sharing something that you're grateful for. Another way in which to do some good coping is to take some time to do something fun in which to distract yourself. So um, maybe it's paying attention to something, um, some funny videos, um, some, some fun uh, things to read or, or some fun TV shows, something like that. It's okay to take some time to distance yourself and distract yourself when you're starting to feel a bit overwhelmed or frustrated or worried. Maybe you might need to take some time for yourself in order to just get outside, get some fresh air, indulge in a bath, or quietly read or meditate. There's lots of apps that can be helpful in terms of these types of meditative or, or breathing exercises, so that may be another tool that you can use. And then another good way for coping is to get in the flow. Really find something that you enjoy and do something that you enjoy, get, get into that activity. And this is something where the time might go by without noticing it, and you're getting a little bit of challenge, but not too much challenge. So think about how you can get in the flow of a fun activity as well. Our next two C's really go together, so I'm gonna to talk, to, talk about them together. These are competence and confidence. So first off, competence. This is the recognition of something that was done really well. So thank yourself for accomplishing something today. This can be really small. It's okay to celebrate the little things. Maybe you got up on time, the kids were fed, maybe you're wearing pants. <laughs> you know, it can be really small um, and it's okay to really pat yourself on the back and feel proud of what went well today. Sometimes we have trouble coming up with something to thank ourselves for during the day and, and that's okay. However, there is something that you can do to uh, facilitate that thought. So ask yourself, WWW, what went well? This could be for today, it could be for yesterday, maybe during the past week. Savor that thought for a moment. Really focus on what happened, the senses that the situation brought up. Maybe it's visual, hearing, tactile. Maybe you were eating something so there were good tastes or smells. And then also consider what your emotions were during that activity. Boost up your feeling and sensation of all of those positive emotions. Maybe it's happiness, contentment, excitement those types of things. Really savor that moment. 
And then when we're starting to see areas where we're doing well, it builds up our next C, which is confidence. So confidence is that ability to be able to get through something that may be challenging or difficult for us. And when we feel accomplished and proud of something that we did, we build up confidence in the fact that we can gain successes again when we do something else or try a new thing. You can also point out the things that others are doing really well and thank them for the great job that they did. This can help build up others' resiliency muscles and such a great thing to do with others um, and for others at this time, especially for people with whom you're living with. If we're building each other up, that's a great way to build up some collective resiliency within the house or the community. Our next C is connection. And this may be described as bringing people together. And certainly this might look a little different right now. However, focus on what you can do currently. Maybe this is reaching out to people whom you're not able to physically see right now and schedule a, a meeting, a coffee date, or a quick catch up using the technology around us to facilitate that. There's lots of games going on right now virtually in order to help connect people with others. And this is a good way to have some enjoyment with other folks while we are physically distancing. Use your technology around you to really build up that connection. I want you to consider about thinking how you can be the first person to reach out. Your connection and your reach out to that person may be, and may be making a big difference in their day. Um, for those of you with children at home, encourage your kids to reach out to their friends or help them connect to their friends virtually. And some ways that it might be helpful to think about is that we are practicing social solidarity with physical distancing at this time. We are all in this together and together we can get through some challenging times. If you consider it that way, we're really building up then our resiliency muscle as well in terms of a community or neighborhood or family and certainly a great thing to be able to do during times of uncertainty. Our next C is contribution. And this is similar to connection in the sense that it involves other people as well. So contribution may be described as helping others. And certainly there are strong opportunities to help others out right now. You might have to get creative because it probably looks different than how you've done um, it before or how you've helped other people before. It's okay that it looks different. Um, use this time to be a little bit creative, and that is something that maybe you can take with you um, as a learning opportunity from the pandemic. I want to really stress that contribution isn't just about giving money, although certainly monetary donations can be a wonderful contribution to um, individuals or organizations. However, I, I want to really stress that at the core, contribution is about getting at kindness. The research on kindness and random acts of kindness strongly suggest that the people who experience kindness get a really good happiness boost. They feel really happy, they feel really great in the moment when they're experiencing that kindness. And you know, that's something that we can all savor and, and, and enjoy. However, what's even more important is that the individuals who deliberately do acts of kindness get an even higher happiness boost. So think about what you would like to do in terms of helping others and contributing to others, which is going to boost up their happiness level. And note also that you might be helping yourself by giving yourself a happiness boost as well. This is not necessarily doing a big thing either. You know, you might just want to focus on the little things you could do for kindness. Maybe you leave a bottle of water or a snack out for a delivery driver. Wave to your neighbors, certainly from a distance, during a walk around the block. Put it, or put a happy message in chalk on the driveway or on the sidewalk in, in front of where you live. Lots of great ways to show some kindness while we are practicing physical distancing. So, and pay attention to uh, other acts of kindness that are going on around you as well. Even during this time of uncertainty and lots of challenge and stress, there are tons of glimmers of kindness all around us. And that's something to definitely savor as well as be grateful for. Our last C is character. How we can get at this is by asking yourself, what are your values and to what do you aspire to be? So one way to look at it in terms of the pandemic is to think about how you would want to be remembered in a, if for in a few years from now, you are asked about how did you handle the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020? 
What would you want to say about yourself and about your coping during this time? What would be important for people to know about how you got through the pandemic? Outside of the pandemic, you can really consider your values. What's important to you? What are you specifically doing in order to aspire to those values? And it may be helpful to write down those, those things that you aspire to or your values with specific actions that you can take to accomplish what you want to get um, and, and what it is that you want to aspire to be. If you even share those lists and those thoughts and actions with other people, you might um, actually get a little bit more commitment to that goal as well as now somebody else knows about it and can also encourage you to reach those goals or um, get those actions accomplished too. So once again, our seven C's of resiliency are control, coping, competence, confidence, connection, contribution, and character. The challenge here for you today is to think about how you can incorporate those seven C's of resiliency into your daily life. And when we focus on those things, we can really see our resiliency muscles grow. As from what we learned that we can build our personal resiliency as well as our collective resiliency muscle within our family or our communities by practicing some of these positive skills. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's truly my pleasure to be with you all, and I hope, I hope that you have wonderful wellness journeys moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy, and thank you all for watching today. We hope you'll join us next week for more tips on wellness. Have a great Wednesday.